Now we're all here at Titchfield Abbey, you're joining me for a voting video and this is the second one because the first one I did seemed to be really popular and I got lots of questions of it and a special thank you to Simon Sideways for sharing it, it really kicked the interest off and um, I've had some comments that I want to address and also lots of questions not just online in the comments section but in my personal life from people who have watched the video and come to me with questions and uh, one of them was from Simon and he said what do I write on my ballot paper to spoil it if you're spoiling your ba ballot paper it doesn't matter what you write you could write they're all mad as a box of frogs it doesn't matter so it's it only comes into question when the vote's so close that they decide to re-examine the sport ballot papers to see if they could um, see if there's any they might be able to add to their list. In other words, I knew a lady once her first time of voting, she circled the name she wanted to vote for rather than putting a cross. So in situations like that, they would just discard that as a sport ballot paper. But if it's really close, they might re-examine them and look for ones they can bump up their numbers. So, but they have to, both parties have to agree on it. So that was, that's that. Um, the second question he asked was, is it a secret ballot? Well, the answer to that is no, and it hasn't been for a very long time. If you'll notice there are um, numbers on your ballot and you get sent your um, interpretation to vote. And on that, there will be a number which you can correspond and, and tie the two together. So it hasn't been a secret ballot for a very, very long time, but, it doesn't matter. I mean, I remember when I was a little bit more paranoid back in the day when I actually scratched the number off because I was appalled by this. But allegedly they have to get a court order to um, go into the ballot box to examine the ballots. But I can assure you, there's absolutely no corruption in our voting system at all. And the third question he has is, can I spoil a, a, a posted ballot? And the answer, I ain't got a clue. I've never done it, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not no, some guru you can, people could follow. I'm just an idiot who figured out a few things. So what I'm trying to convey is if we all get together and make this a thing, vote for none of the above, let's see what happens. Now, obviously this abbey I'm sat in front of now, it was alleged that uh, Shakespeare himself performed his plays here as like a beta test for, for them for when they first started. and. They've actually built this on a ley line, which is called the bell, and that's the spine of Albion, which has got um, node points where the two lines of male and female cross. They cross each other, it's called a node point, and this abbey was built on one. And that crosses each other 33 times as it goes up through our, our green and pleasant land. So it's a point of interest and very, very noteworthy. Um, right, what are the other? Let me just look down and see what the other questions were. What happens when there is a greater number of sport ballot papers? Well, Nothing is the answer. They will do nothing with them, but one of the things they have to do is record the number of them. So in the event of an election, you always have the returning officer will announce the numbers and also the sport numbers, but they don't have any value in their own right. And there's no way they will put a box that you could vote for none of the above on there because we all know what would happen. Once you're in power, the idea is to hang on to it. They're never going to let it go. So. This is an idea, it's making a statement which can be pointed at in the event of a, a mass rush to spoil your ballot papers and it being a huge majority, then maybe we can point to that at a later date, even in a, a court scenario, saying the will of the people, the majority, is not what uh, these people are representing. And I know the trouble with the democracy is you, you can have a situation where you get 49% of the views and opinions and values of people not being represented. So democracy isn't a one a good fix for everything. We, we need to find a mutual ground. And, but I think the current system has to come to an end because it's clearly not working. And I think people have just, I've never seen so many people have just had enough of it and want to change. The, the yearning for this is massive. So let me look at the next question. Uh, spoiled ballot papers. Yes, no, I've done that. Machiavellian. <laughs> I had someone come up to me and ask me, what does Machiavellian mean? Um, wow. That, let's go back to, um, I've brought this with me to show, I put the book off the side. Nicolas Machiavelli. That's, um, he was the Spanish prince and he wrote a book back in the early, I think it's 1536 or around that sort of time. 
um, which was the dark art of politics. Now, this book, he was born, I think it was, um, God, I'm testing my brain now, 1469 to 1527. So that was his era and it crossed over with Henry VIII and this book got in the hands of Henry, the, Henry VIII and it changed the way politics happened in this country. I mean, for his father ruled the kingdom with much respect. People would have died for that king, whereas Henry VIII changed it round and decided after reading this book to control with fear. Because, and this book has been well researched and read ever since. You think it's 500 years old and more. So yeah, this, um, the other point I was gonna make about this is this book was alleged to be on the table, the bedside table of one of our prime ministers, which was John Major. And I heard that on Radio 4 years and years ago, so <laughs> you, you decide whether that's true or not. But he meant to read this as his nighttime read. Um, make of that what you will. But the prince, so this is where the term Machiavellian come from. That was that. Um, corruption is the point. Everyone seems to feel they're corrupt. And my answer to you is, well, they're not corrupt. They're just, they've got no penalty for doing anything that we perceive as wrong. They've got no deterrent. They're not going to experience a short drop and a sudden stop for um, treason anymore so they've got no deterrent to go against the will of the people and that's why they can behave in what we perceive as a corrupt corrupt way they just see it as the old school ties club getting together and making each other rich so that's that um, <laughs> the, the comment I, I love the comment in voting makes a difference they wouldn't let us do it you're absolutely right I couldn't agree more um, I've said this in a previous video, but what can we go on to do to... The, the thing is, in the shared reality, we are co-creators, so they give us the play, and it's up to us what parts we play in it as an extra. So, although their script is handed out to us, we get the choice to make little dents in their storyline. And if you see a chink in their armour, why shouldn't we exploit it? And that's why I believe spoiling the ballot paper is one of them chinks. Because in the past, we would have, the people who would have done this was doing it on a single protest. We've never actually got together and see it as a third option, a choice. Because the choice being offered isn't one which is valuable to us. So that's why I think this might be a way forward. When we think about everyone a couple of years back was out clapping at the sky and banging pots and pans together, if you could get the same sort of like energy behind people marching off to the polling station with a sharpie in hand, ready to spoil whatever, whatever they like on it, um, it doesn't even matter if it's profanity, you can still just spoil the ballot paper and that's you giving your energy to the part you're playing in his story, his story. So it's that's the script, what part do you want to play? And if you don't want to play a part, you don't have to. That's the beauty of free will. Right, what else have I got? Oh, the six foot span. <laughs> yeah, the, everyone's standing six foot apart. You know, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. When you look at the geometry, even of Westminster itself, and you have the mace at the front there, and I've, I've forgotten how many politicians there are, 600, maybe seven, I can't remember. But because they got a six foot hand span, if they touch the mace and they all held hands out, hands back, and they come out the main doors and round the corner and up the stairs, um, they still wouldn't reach a decision. So, and the, the other comment I picked up on was 33 names, indeed, indeed. Uh, there was 33 names on that uh, war memorial and there still is and that's just one of them things I'm afraid you'll find that number in reality everywhere you look but there's no need to be paranoid I promise you it's a uh, <laughs> it's all a bit of fun at the end of the day so I'd like to treat this um, this situation of this spoiling your paper as as a patriarchal thing to do in other words to honor your country to set things right and to give the people in these uh, positions of power um, a tap on the shoulder and say, we don't want this anymore. We want to be represented by people who value our opinions and are going to react to what we require. So if you're, beha if you're behaving for a third entity that isn't in our interest, 
we're going to require you to stop that immediately and that's why I think the one way we can start this process legitimately, lawfully, is just by spoiling our pallet paper as a start. Because let's face it, the forced dichotomy on choice isn't a choice at all. So that's that. Is there anything else I wanted to note? I don't think there was. This video is the uh, going to be in a series now because I figured this is something that people are really interested in, the pros and cons. And you know, when we look at history itself, there's always been points in it which are noteworthy. And even here, Shakespeare playing his plays right at the time of, of Henry VIII, and he died. Was it twenty? Was it twenty eighth of January, fifteen forty seven? So you know th th that time th then it went on to his son and then the liver beast and era it was really interesting time then and history has shown us that if we come together and co-create an idea and get busy with it so everyone understands why you're doing something with energy and to change something for the better i think we can get behind it so let's get on with the next video shall we so any questions you have Put them in the comments and I should try and do as many videos I can about this subject right up to the election. So if you like this sort of thing, come and join me in the next one.